Hi there, my name is Dorian, and this is The Shading Course. Let's begin with a question for you. Who are your favorite artists? Whose work touches something in your soul and inspires you? There are many amazing artists, and I noticed that my favorites have one thing in common. They understand light. In the year 2005, I found this image online, and it changed my life. I've now been on a 15-year journey of studying, drawing, and painting, with a focus on light and realism. I've learned a lot, and while I love making art, what I enjoy at least as much is pulling all this information together into a crystal clear format. That's what the shading course is. This course is going to change the way you draw. That's my promise to you. That's been my experience teaching over the last 10 years. But not only is the course going to change the way you draw, it's going to change the way you see the world around you. I think the more you are able to perceive, the easier it is to bring your artwork alive. There are over 25 assignments in the course. If you can control a pencil well enough to write, you will be able to complete the assignments. If you're a professional artist or a teacher, you will deepen your understanding of light and shadow and realism. By the way, here are some of my early drawings. Developing my skill took effort and time, and I know that with practice, you can develop yours. Now, in this course, we're going to work with understanding, and we're also going to work with care and with precision to make artwork that you're proud of. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be fun, and it's going to be worth it. So let's begin. All right. Welcome back to Proco, everybody. Uh, today, we're doing a live stream with Dorian Eaton, a fantastic, amazing artist who you can see had uh, quite the art journey from those original pieces to where he is now. Um, we're, we're brought to here today to just talk about uh, the things that are actually in Dorian's course uh, and how you can save a little bit of money on those. Uh, and you can actually ask some live questions to Dorian in the chat here on YouTube if you're watching it while it's live. Later on, you can type some questions in the comments, but we'll see. Dorian, how's it going today? It's going well. I spent all day setting up the studio for the stream. And this being live, I really want to make use of that so you guys can ask questions about Anything really for me, nothing is off limits. Stephen will act as a little bit of a filter, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but art, life, drawing, painting, anything goes. And I'm going to paint a self-portrait, which I started last week, I think. And I don't know where it's going. It might transform into something else, like not even have my face in it like this. And I would like during the next, I don't know how much time you have, 90 minutes, yeah, about if, if you want to go less, more, that's okay. Yeah, one to two hours, let's say. Mm -hmm. I want your input also of what you would like to see me do on the painting. And if you have any ideas, suggestions for stuff to try or do, like, let's make this a collaboration mm -hmm. using, making use of the fact that we are live. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess... Uh, just remember, yeah, like like you said, you guys can ask questions there in the chat. Um, some of them might come up when it's a little more natural for it to, like, just hit in the pace of things. Um, but we'll try to get to all of those. I guess to start things off, Dorian, what um, your shading course? You have a couple different courses that you teach and th that you sell. Um, the shading course really focuses, obviously, on shading in general. Uh, yes. But what what do you think is was missing from other online education. Yeah, with the egg, the classic. <laughs> the famous egg. Um, what, what do you think was missing from other online education that you thought you really wanted to tackle in your shading course? Oh, I don't know what was missing, but I really enjoyed making information as clear as possible mm -hmm. and structuring. I may bring everything together that I've learned in different schools. My education was very classical in Florence, you know, atelier style. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the U.S., different states, 
uh, studying entertainment design, so more concept art, illustration, 3D, and the entertainment industry and illustration overall has kind of carried the knowledge from the past into the present. Mm -hmm. Some new developments got made and some things maybe got dropped. And I just love learning and teaching. And I put everything together from all the books I read and all the personal experience mm -hmm. to kind of streamlined journey that people can go through. Yeah. Understand how light works and how to bring your artwork alive with light. Yeah. It's no, I did. I, yeah, absolutely. I do think that there's something nice about passing like old learning, like the, of the masters and old teaching through a lens of today. There are certain terms or ideas that are foregone conclusions now that it's nice to just be able to reference with the terminology of today. Um, yeah. Yesterday, Especially during working in 3D helped me a lot to understand mm -hmm. how light works and light and form interacting. But there's absolutely. a little bit of blender in the course too. It, in actuality, really? Yes, it's oh. such a powerful tool. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, so there are a couple questions in here. I'm gonna let a few questions kind of pile up. Um, but do you want to take us through what you'll be working on today? And I'll hand this the screen share over to you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop this up just so it's just yours. I don't have I don't have your screen, Dorian. Your screen share. Um, I'll start by showing in the studio okay. and then go to screen share. I'll let you okay, know yeah. how it works. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I guess we'll just, uh, just show yours. So let me see here. Perfect. Okay. So I got a multicam setup. There's this camera. Then there's this camera, which shows the painting and you can see the scale roughly. It is probably the biggest painting I've made so far. Okay, good, thank you. Um, and then down here, there's also the palette. And the painting right now is in the kind of block-in stage, no tan block-in. So there are two values, just all the shadows have been blocked in on the white canvas which is not the best method. I much prefer to work on a toned canvas than on a white canvas. But I think this brings us to what today is going to be like. It's not a polished um, kind of ideal class. Maybe it's not even a class what we're going to do today. It's an exploration of the creative process and problem solving. And I'd like to talk a little bit about why I'm making this painting and the, like what, what brought me here and why working this big is meaningful and working in public is meaningful. Um, yeah, kind of that's an overview. So on the screen share, I'll show you what I've done so far. One second. Okay, so you should you can pull up my screen now, Stephen. Great. So I started with this photograph, which is very low resolution. Took it at night. It's like a one of those creative, intense moments. Like I want to start this, and I had this canvas sitting around, and I made a grid on it, just very simply dividing, like. Like making a diagonal, mm -hmm. diagonal that gives me the center and the center, and then dividing those again. Then I took the photograph and put it on top in Photoshop, top of the grid, so I know roughly where my glasses end with the grid, for example, just to help me a little bit with blocking in. And then pretty fast, like maybe half an hour walking mm -hmm. just to get something on the canvas. It's an interesting one to, to see this because I think that 
um, usually people stress having like the highest quality uh, of actual reference and you chose to yes just just go into it like eh, this is fine a nighttime shot yeah and it is because i wasn't planning i was certainly wasn't planning to do a demo on this mm -hmm. and i i didn't know what it's going to be i just have to start and actually i'm sorry i wasn't finished i stopped my screen share prematurely oh you're okay I i'll bring that go back, back for a second do you, do you think that that's something that you're able to do because of your experience starting from a like a quote unquote lower quality reference? Um, I think psychologically experience lets you relax a little bit. And actually like, I don't have much experience with something like this. Hmm. And I, I want to talk about this. Um, I graduated in 2009. And since then, like 15 years, I've made maybe, I don't know, 10 finished paintings. I've barely painted. It, and yeah, go ahead. So it just mostly uh, like graphite and the other things that you have in your courses normally? Yeah, I've drawn, but I've mostly focused on teaching, which I love. Mm -hmm. I really, really enjoy teaching. And I've really struggled with making art, making work. I'll come back to that. Uh, right. But you mentioned the quality of the photograph. And actually today I realized, man, I cannot really <laughs> use this picture for much more than what <laughs> I have. So I took photographs today. And this is chronological, first one on the top left, and then several pictures. I also have my good camera already set up in this whole you know, multicam rig. I don't want to unplug and restart everything. So I use my phone holding it mm -hmm. as far away from myself as possible, which still creates a lot of uh, lens distortion. Absolutely. But it's going to be better than nothing. So you all of you that are watching, when we look at the selection and think about which image you would choose, like which one looks best to you and why. If you like, you can put it in the chat. Uh, it's going to be difficult to... <laughs> yeah, to know which one's which. Yeah. yeah. But like your thoughts of how do you choose? How do you know which one of these is better than others? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give people a moment. We don't have to... Have to yeah, they're, they're on a little bit of a delay. Um, sure. About a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so for this one, since you had your reference and you're trying to work in this new medium that is isn't one that you necessarily do a lot um were there yes. any special considerations um that you think are different from drawing in graphite to going into painting uh it's much more complex i think painting graphites you have the paper you have the graphite if you press too hard you cannot erase but otherwise you can erase and redraw it's pretty simple mm -hmm. but painting you have the whole chemistry of paint layering drying times, different pigments, all of that. Okay. And this is actually the first time I'm doing a painting demo, I think ever. Really? I might be wrong, but I think like a setup like this with oil paint, I've never done before. So for me, it's a courageous act. <laughs> and yeah, this is, this is a brave one. To the unknown a bit, which is important for me to do. And I think for all of you also. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's it's important to put yourself outside of your comfort zone to progress. Yeah. We did have a couple of responses from the people here. Um, okay. It seems like the, the unanimous opinion here is that it's the ones that have um, the harder cast shadows. Yeah, um, so towards the, one, the bottom. Yeah, most people said bottom row, um, bottom middle. Uh, oh, and one uh, person got real specific. Aaron, you're <laughs> a champion for being able to read this. I uh, said 3170. Uh, is the one that stood out for 70. them. This one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since that one was so specific, I think we're going to take that as the winner for people who, <laughs> uh, who said which one they liked the best. Um, yes. My winner is anyone? 72, which mm. is very similar. I mean, pretty much identical. Yeah. And then I turn it to grayscale as a reference. I see. I see. And we're going to work with that. Okay. Yeah, um, I guess, is there anything that you want to show in the studio before we switch over to you beginning it and taking people through your process? 
Um, yeah, actually, to talk a little bit more, see, I have so many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, not sure where to start. Um, like I have some some images here behind me. Mm -hmm. um, so, do, do, do. Yeah, I guess like what, what, would, what would be your, your steps? Yeah. Like what's the exact like next step from where you're at, where you ha uh -huh. had laid things out with your reference grid? Where would you be taking things? Yeah, so now because this is um, romber on a white canvas, mm -hmm. I want to get rid of all the white because it's going to get in the way later. So what I'll do is raw umber and actually I can squeeze it out now over here and I will dilute it a little bit with mineral spirits and <laughs> to make a point this is a Mineral Spirits bottle that I bought in Florence when I was a student. Oh, man. 2007, probably. And it's, you know, maybe down here. So Goodness. that's how little I've painted. All yeah. these paints, all these tubes. Uh, these guys. Are, are those also, you bought those during from school? From back then. These are my student paints. <laughs> I've not painted. I've not used them. <laughs> And a big part of that is because I didn't feel like I can. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like uh, I can be a good artist or I can make interesting paintings or like, I didn't have that confidence mm -hmm. in myself. So I just put it off and I put a lot of pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. I know what really good painting is. And I've made some work I'm very proud of in school, like this. And maybe this is the kind of work that people watching uh, kind of know me for. Mm -hmm. I think very much so, yeah. Very classical, refined, polished work. And I'm proud of that. And I'm grateful for having had the opportunity to learn that, that kind of working. And I've had, like still after spending four years drawing painting every day, which I, I thrived in that environment. I loved it. It was really my thing. When I graduated, I didn't have a teacher to give me a structure of what to do next. Um, and I just was lost and I didn't have confidence, like zero. Mm -hmm. And the last 15 years, I think, have been trying, like, the journey I'm on is finding confidence, finding belief in myself. Yeah, I think it's definitely a hard one when you go from being in school where someone's giving you that that actual like rigid structure and where you know what your progress is and what your next steps are to then move into just kind of like teaching yourself as you progress. It's a really hard one. I think that's actually one of the strengths of having something like an art course online where there are so many different online resources that will push and pull you in different directions for you to actually know that this is just the thing that I'm doing right now and focus on that one thing, it makes a really big difference for people. Yeah. And physically being in an environment mm -hmm. around other students, I think is very conducive to diving deep and really getting into it. Absolutely. With my course, we're kind of simulating something as close as possible as that mm -hmm. to that, which is a Discord server that we have. And also weekly feedback sessions. So every Wednesday, we actually get together on Zoom and I look at students' work and we discuss, we have uh, questions, I do paintovers, mm -hmm. and I really, really enjoy. Like Wednesday evening for me is one of my favorite parts of the week when we get together and have that exchange. Yeah, you even there are some people here in the chat from your Discord. Um, so yeah. it looks like there's a uh, Kia, Robert, and Javi are here. Yes. So yeah. it's good. It's a good community. Yeah, I'm also really proud and grateful of the, the vibe we've created. It's very supportive there. There's a second server as well, which is public. It's called at the moment, the Drawing Dojo. And Kia is actually hosting weekly drawing sessions there. We're doing NOTAN and Valley Study Challenges at the moment. We're in week <laughs> 13, I think. 
So thank you, Kia. You are amazing. Uh, yeah, the community aspect is really important, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it it's like that uh, the classic um, like the the like thing in anime where different people have to like drive each other to get better at something um, because you have that community of this or rivals. Um, I guess honestly, we could probably um, start going into the portrait demo here, uh, and then I'll pepper you with some questions as you actually get into it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to just your screen. Sounds if good. You want to take that? Yeah. And I'll give you control for what you show. Yeah. I'm hesitating a little bit because I really want to like go a bit deeper into my past and the motivation for this painting. Mm. Um, but I tend to lose myself in details a little bit. And I'm not sure exactly what what age people are who are watching this. Um, they may not be relevant. So maybe you can provide some guardrails if you feel like I'm going off too far, you can bring me back. Like you getting into something that would be too technical or? No, too personal or psychological. Oh, no, 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 you're okay. Yeah, no, like you, you're saying that there's like certain motivations for you to make art. I think doing a self-portrait is like the like the highest degree of that kind of thing. Um, so what, what was it that motivated you to do this one that you wanted to get into for the self-portrait? Yeah. So it's a, it was an invitation from someone to paint. No, I think I need to give the background. <laughs> so, <laughs> so background and this is kind of intense, but um, I was kidnapped when I was three years old by my father, who, yeah, now things Goodness. get real. <laughs> yeah, jeez. The, their marriage was falling apart. There was alcoholism. Their business that my parents had was falling apart. And it was a desperate thing he did. Mm. It, was a, it was not a good idea, not a solution. Mm -hmm. But that's what he did. He took me and my sister away from my mom and told my mother that she would not see us again until or unless she promises to stay with him, you know, to try to hold everything together. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. And I don't remember much from those couple weeks that we were hidden. But I remember afterwards that I was afraid of losing my mom. Like I had these recurring images of a bed filled with presents. And I would receive those presents, but I mm -hmm. also knew that in exchange, my mother would not come back. Mm. And I was always very shy like growing up and in social situations, just very cautious and slow to trust, like hyper vigilant. And if I felt about myself like there's just something wrong with me fundamentally. I was taken away. There was some other stuff too, like fundamental self-doubt. And maybe some of that is like expressing itself or, or being a challenge in art. Yeah, that stuff kind of sticks with you. I have the skills to make paintings, you know? Yeah. And there's a really strong difference between how I see myself and what, what is possible for me and how other people see me. Mm -hmm. And so I want to dedicate today's session to all of those people out there who feel similarly, who feel like there's a, a strength and a depth and a intensity in them, but they mm -hmm. can't access it. It is so frustrating. Yeah. I've done a lot. I've done different therapies and coachings and rituals and plant medicine and things help a little bit mm -hmm. yeah it, it's, um, it's hard to yeah. build from from that stuff in your past it's it's something that stays with you and informs pretty much every decision even if it's something as like as small as just what you choose to take on as like as hobbies or even some small things that you yeah. come across in life like you 
don't feel like taking part in a particular activity um, because of what this made you feel in the past informs everything. Yeah. And so for you, that, that's added to your self-doubt, despite your absolutely insane amount of skill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and definitely socially. Like I, I think I was antisocial. I don't know what the official definition is, but mm -hmm. there's so, like, if I walk down, not anymore, but like, for all my time in Florence, for example, if I walk down a sidewalk on the street and someone is coming towards me, I would very often change the side of the road mm. and walk on the other sidewalk, pretending I need to go over there, even mm -hmm. though I needed to stay on my side, just to not have that awkward encounter. And I was aware that this was not a good way of living, but yeah. I just couldn't do, I didn't know what to do about it. I had to force myself to go to parties. I did not enjoy social settings. It was overwhelming. And parties are no fun anyway. I'm with you there. Depends <laughs> <laughs> on the party. Yeah. Right. I just, for, firstly, I stay away from a party. I think it's good to stack up life experiences. It kind of informs uh, art and other conversations. Yeah. But I don't think it has to necessarily be the traditional party. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And I did challenge myself. Uh, and I had this feeling that there's something precious underneath. And I wanted to develop myself and my life experience. So I traveled even when I was quite young. I think 16, I, I biked across Austria with a friend who was 15, actually. And continued that, like, travel around the world. And yeah, I've, I've come a long way. Also doing presentations, like in school, the worst thing the teacher could <laughs> ask me is to do a presentation. I wanted to disappear. It was... Mm -hmm very 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 uncomfortable and maybe i'm also teaching and doing videos partly to overcome that because mm -hmm. i think it's possible to live in a way where i am just comfortable with my own skin like i am fine it's okay yeah and yeah, to do I art think... like that too where i'm yeah, not I think... concerned about am i doing it right are people going to think it's beautiful mm -hmm. Yeah, going through it, I think it, what's it, it's uh, immersion therapy. Go yeah. through it to get through it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do you think that there's anything else that you want to hit that's the particular inspiration for this self-portrait yes. then? So when, just a very brief, going back to my past, my mother kind of escaped to Switzerland, where she's from. We were living in Austria at the time. And she initiated the divorce, which took a long time. It was really difficult. And she worked with a family therapist for, I don't know, maybe four or five months. I don't remember this therapist at all, but her name stuck in my head. And so fast forward 30 years, I've lived in Italy, in the US, in Spain. Now I'm back in Switzerland. 30 years later, and I find out that this woman is still in the area where I grew up, and she's about to retire. So I wrote to her, hey, I have no idea if you remember me, but when I was three, four years old, you helped my family, my mother and myself and my sister. Would you be open to have coffee like, to get together? And she remembered me, and she was up for that. And we did a session, actually, which was really great. And I, at the end, I asked, what, I, what can I do for you? Can I pay you or can I do something else? And she said, Dorian, just paint the painting of your strength. Okay. And I thought, wow, yeah, that's really good. I think that would be a good thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I like, I like that being the actual motivation for this one. Yeah. And so that was, it's been three years. And I have pushed that off. Like I thought I'm, I'm not capable of making that or whatever, like all the excuses, all the stuff, maybe it just wasn't time. And then two weeks ago, I got really sick. Mm. I don't have to go into the specifics and bore your audience, our audience with that. But if I had not had medical attention, I, I might have died from at least one of the three things that all hit me at the same time. Goodness. And I realized if I die, 
I'm going to regret not having tried to paint the painting of my strength. Mm, <laughs> this mm. is the thing I've been searching for, like to feel, I don't know, this thing, this sense of possibility for myself. Mm -hmm. And that was the night where I made the block in like, of that painting. Okay. So you were fresh off being sick or were you actually yeah. still sick when you did this? Getting better, recovering. Like it's probably going to be all right, but holy moly, it could have gone really bad if I hadn't had medical attention. I'm glad that and you did. I don't know how long I'm going to be around and I'll regret yeah. if I don't try this. So yeah, I think it. last week, I think that I started the painting and then we had a meeting about this live stream and hey, what do you want to do? And I... <laughs> Egg was an option, but I think we've got <laughs> enough eggs. So somehow I thought, what if I do this portrait? It's kind of something I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. And I think and like so it, here we it, are. it's an interesting one to get to see a person work through painting since it is such a malleable medium, whereas the things that you lay it's... down don't necessarily end up in the final product even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if my face is going to be there at the end. At yeah. The end of today, Maybe, probably, maybe not. We'll see where it goes. I'm open to make a mess and to go, yeah, go with the flow. Okay. Yeah, so I guess, um, do you feel that now that we've established this one, people have a little bit of context? We can get into it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, so I'm going to switch over to you here, and then I'll start bringing you some questions. Yes. And so um, one thing I like to do that I've done on a few paintings now, is to write something on a lower layer of the painting that's going to get painted over. And some of it is going to disappear, disintegrate as the paint and the thinner and so forth goes on top. And some of it is going to stay and shine through until the very end, until mm. the painting is done. Um, so I'm asking all of you who are watching for things to write onto this painting now like as it's as it is like this okay and maybe you can put here. that into quotes so we know that this is something that you would like me to write and it's not a question that you're asking yeah perfect i'm gonna write something and i need to choose a medium so am i going to use something quite permanent like conte or charcoal Hmm. I'm going to go with a kind of lighter Conte. I might regret this, but that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Taking risks. So here's like a lush yeah. tone. This is the process. Conte, yes. So I'm going to write, know thyself. Um, let's see if I can reach. Okay. No, I think I'll do know thy self i'm just gonna go ahead and put, bring together all the things that you guys are suggesting here big and what is it that you that you're worried about with the conte for this for you having to regret uh, it later just that it's too permanent. Like if I did this with black, it would be so high contrast that mm -hmm. when I paint on top, it's really gonna serve through almost like it's darker than, than what is there already. So it just, you see only the text and then a little bit of painting face. Mm -hmm. That's what I would be concerned about. So that's why I chose a lighter value. Absolutely. Okay. All right. This, this, like this is an album cover right now. <laughs> I like this. Uh, so some that we have here from the people in the chat, uh, we've got brave, powerful, faith. Uh, I'm here. I'm strong. So I'll let you choose from any of these that you want before giving you others. Yep. Brave. Um, we have powerful, faith. I'm here. I'm strong. Strength, 
inner strength. Uh, continue. Okay, slow down. I want to yeah. catch as many <laughs> as I can. I'm going to put powerful uh, above my mouth because one thing I've also struggled with is my voice and speaking. And maybe you've noticed this, that I stop and go a lot in my speech and it's, I apologize. Um, I'm thinking a lot about saying the right things. Um, and I think language is so powerful and I've studied the use of language and I'm continuing to study that. Um, yeah, so powerful is right here now. Mm -hmm. okay. What else was there? Um, uh, strength and inner strength were a couple that were put forward. Strength and inner strength. I feel like hair is a symbol of strength. You know, people that don't cut their hair because all their, their wisdom is there. So a, little, a little Samson energy. <laughs> And inner strength for me is, is inside of strength. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and then we have continue. Continue. Yeah, in the sense I'm, I'm reading that as like, keep going, don't give up, mm -hmm. which I have done. I've kept going. Even though I stopped, like I quit art a couple times, mm -hmm. um, but I'm back. Uh, so, uh, do you think that this fits into any particular area here? I'm not sure. We do have a couple others. Yeah, I'll put it here for now. What else do we have? Uh, so we've got uh, art is a marathon, not a race. Uh huh. Like not a, a sprint. Long... Yeah. Uh, I think art is a dance. <laughs> okay. Do, do you think that you want to translate that one into it being a dance, and that's how you write something on there, or does that yeah. serve this particular piece? Yeah, I'll put dance. Hmm. I think dance is there by, by how I move my brush and pen. Like I'm dancing with it already, so I'm, I'm embodying that one. Mm. Okay. What okay. else? Um, so we've this got res resilience. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Resilience. Resilience. And I don't know why this sparked another word. Uh, the word that was sparked in my mind was together mm. for a long time. I also thought that I have to do everything by myself. Like I have to figure this out by myself. I have to, I don't know, like this is how, how my thinking was, that it's not real unless I do it all by myself. And I need help, by the way, with my course and design and especially social media and marketing. If anyone wants to help me, message me. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized also the my lack of comfort around people is partly because I'm trying to do it myself, like reading books about how to be comfortable around people. Mm. It can help, but in the end, like it's, you have to do it with other people. Absolutely. And art, same way, like learning, living. So put together. Um, and what was the word that I departed from? Uh, I think that might have been from resilience. Yes, I think so. Uh, together resilience. I put that on the two sides, so we're resilient together. Mm -hmm. I apologize for covering the frame. Resilient or resilience? Uh, resilience. I think either works, whichever feels yeah, right. I put in the that C moment. already, so yeah. That. Uh, and we've got carpe diem. They didn't put it in an exclamation point. Up to you if you choose yeah, this or not. Yeah, also a good one. Let Let's me put that. Day. So let's see what the black Conte does. How that's different from the brown that I'm using. Mm -hmm. 
I think in the beard, I can be darker, more contrasty, because it's a darker value. Absolutely. Uh, do carpe diem or carpe diem. Uh, let's do two. Huh. When I was 16, 17, I also got into graffiti. This mm. makes me think, this make, reminds me of doing graffiti. <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I also had uh, a little getting up phase. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, after that, we have uh, express and effort. If mm. those words work by themselves or if they spark anything else in you. Yeah. Uh, I think express is already mm -hmm. like, in the work. And effort is important, but it's not everything. And too much effort... Like, this is also something I felt a lot. I felt like in my being, there was at the same time the gas, if you think of a motorcycle handlebar, like revving the gas, and at the same time, clamping, cramping the brakes. I felt like that so much. There's all this energy, but I I'm, can't express it. Mm -hmm. So more effort there it would not be the solution. Yeah. It's also letting go of those breaks. And How about trusting. that? Letting go? Yeah. I'll put those two together, like effort and letting go. Mm. Uh -oh. And I think we should continue to the next step yeah it, a final one or um no this is this is fine as is okay. yeah the fun of, of coffee <laughs> so you're, that's how you know you're a real artist if you're, <laughs> <laughs> your fingers are staying with contact <laughs> yes. with anything yeah because um, if so you're making marks oh ah a clean yeah absolutely marks, but... the fingerprints i agree <laughs> very very much so it's also a good test of how much this sticks. So I'll be, I'll be a little bit disappointed if it all washes away, um, but it might, we'll see. Mm -hmm. If it does, then, you know, you've been part of the journey of <laughs> me applying those words and they're, they're there, they're in the piece now. Yeah. And if they get erased. And I might put them back if they go away too much. Yeah, I mean, you have a whole video record. If you, oh, if you really I'm like the exact placement too. Yes, I'm sorry I had the oh, <laughs> YouTube okay. monitor over there. I apologize okay. to everyone. So now we got the um, reference image. So from here, what would be the next step that you would take this to? Yeah, let's do the, the raw umber. Okay. Glaze, it's, wash. Since this will probably be something that's a process you've been through plenty of times. Um, I can go ahead and start giving you some of those questions. Uh, <laughs> or do, you, do you want to get to talk through. about... This no, I think I have, I have half mental capacity. <laughs> questions. Yes. Uh, that's, from, that's from the spirits. You have to open a window. Um, okay, Are you so... saying that or is, in the, is that an audience? No, 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 um, no. That's just me. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the mineral spirits will do that, though. For, for anyone yes, picking we'll that see. up for the first time. I'll get high in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 if I get um, more wild, I'll just... Blame it on the mineral spirits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one person was asking, um, they don't know how to use different grades of pencils, even though they use a very specific range. Is there any kind of blanket advice that you recommend for people trying to figure that try, out? Try everything would be my advice. Um, for lighter tones, use harder pencils. For, soft, for darker tones, use softer pencils. Mm -hmm. I love to keep things simple. So I generally use two pencils. I need to cover my face. Let's see. There. Yeah. Two pencils for everything. A 2H and a 2B. Okay, as, my, as my baseline. So the one I'm not 
holding is the other one. Keeps mm -hmm. everything really simple. And then if I need to go darker, I will use a 4B, uh, 3B, 4B, but those mm -hmm. get really shiny really quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's now pencils like this. Maybe this camera is better. Uh, Faber-Castell matte pit yeah. graphite matte mm -hmm. and that we'll, go darker we'll... without having so much of the shininess of graphite. Yeah. If I hold this right like this, you see how light it is. Absolutely. That is kind of annoying. The downside of using graphite pencil. And if you're using some of those matte pencils, you can get a dark value without having the shiny tone. Yeah. And also a little bit, like it'll be a little bit easier as well for it to go down. To go dark, you mean? Yeah, because you won't have that perception of the shine causing you to think that it is so much lighter than it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. And just a quick question for anyone who in the comments will ask this later. What was the brand of the blue pencil? Stettler. Okay. But brands, I don't know. Like people put too much emphasis, I think, on what type agree. of what type of pencil you use. Just try, try lots. Try as many thing, many material brands, things as you can. You'll find the thing that works for you. It might be the least successful, rec least recommended brand, but it works for you. So that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what's, what someone else thinks is the strength of one particular brand or anything like that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the same thing for you. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. So <laughs> I did a test earlier and I made this too wet and it just kept, kept dripping. So now I'm keeping this quite dry. The consequence of it being dry means I have to put more pressure, which is a bit... Unfortunate because it's more likely to erase what's already there. Mm. And my hope is that we can still see the drawing underneath once I put this raw umber mixture down. Maybe let's dilute it a touch more. Okay. And just to remind people who might be coming in now, um, uh -huh. after you had addressed it earlier. Yeah, good luck summing all that up. <laughs> yeah, just for for the reason that you're putting down this this kind of base right now, this is to kind of kill the white that's there and yes. help to not put so much emphasis on that. Yeah. Correct. And so you're um, mixing on are you mixing on a, on a wood board or is there glass over this? It's a glass palette with a wood underneath. Mm -hmm. And so I can also put paper underneath here. Sometimes it's nice to have a neutral gray. It allows you to judge the colors better. Mm -hmm. But as I said, like I have <laughs> barely painted. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have a bunch of uh, neutral, neutral gray paper lying around ready for this? Yeah, or just have not had to solve these problems mm -hmm. very much. So you're watching me kind of reactivate my painting uh, mode. I don't know. I mean, it's good to get to see. Okay, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> how are you feeling? See, touch, I feel good. This is fun. I love <laughs> this. These brush strokes. I wish we could keep that. And actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer. This one. Um, if you guys want to see the reference Ooh, better, wonderful. let me know. I can like bring the camera back again. Mm -hmm. I apologize for this now in this frame. That's okay. Uh, I could do that. Yeah, this is fine. I think like th keeping it here is totally okay. Okay. Yeah, this way they get to see you actually working with the palette still. Yeah, I think that's nice. Okay. You had, you had said that you were kind of concerned about whether um, the underlying drawing would still show through. How do you feel about that? It's at the limits, definitely. 
I can barely see it now. So I'm, I'm thinning the raw umber more. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with this wet brush back into here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm mixing the turpentine into what I already put down. Mm -hmm. That will lighten it a bit. But yeah, man, I think the text is all going to go. I mean, honestly, that's that's kind of the nature of the beast of painting. You you lose that underlying stuff, and like sometimes only you know what's there. It doesn't mean it wasn't there, and it wasn't important. Yeah. But I want to keep some of it more. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm making this more permanent. The thing I was afraid of, I should have just done from the beginning. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, you can't see that so well. Let me move the cam back a bit more. Oh, do you, is someone someone was asking so. if we can make the reference available somewhere else. So oh they're, man, they're drawing long. <laughs> uh, I feel a bit strange about that. People drawing me. Yeah. Um, if but where can we do that? Um, honestly, if you fly. if you want to, um, if you can send that to me, I can upload that somewhere and then drop a link here for people. Okay, we'll take maybe a minute or so for me yeah. to to uh, how do I get it to you? Um, here in in the the message the chat that we had here, there's a private message uh, on the side. It's typed in too. Can you see that? Um, one second. Yes, so I can okay. drop files there. Yeah, I'll I'll um I'll send you an email address on there. Oh, I see. There's that. Then you can just send me that file, and I'll take care of it from there. Okay. <laughs> we get a bunch of Korean portraits. <laughs> so, if can we make a deal with everyone? Yeah. If you use that image, um. um work in a way where you go crazy. Pretend you're not going to show it anyone else. Just have fun with it. Explore, like break the rules, mm -hmm. make a mess like I'm doing now here and do it for your sake. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not for sharing. That's the cost you pay for using this. Awesome oh, you can record. share. I think you can <laughs> share. But, but have the, the energy that I'm having now, mm -hmm. which is, Free, <laughs> fun, break things. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got your email address. Wonderful. And there. that image might be too big. No, let's see. This is the this is the sausage being made for a live stream. <laughs> this is the fun stuff. Yes. Okay. Sent. All right. Wonderful. I'll kick this back to you and get that shared here for everybody. Okay, so I'll pick some things that I want to keep uh, and emphasize them with a darker Conte. Maybe let's do a test. Yeah, see that stays a little bit more visible. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Oh. Okay. How long has it been going? Just about um, an hour. Yeah, so just about an hour right now. Just as a reminder for everybody, the thing that brings us all here today is that that sale. Uh, so right now, there's 20% off everything on Proco if it's not already on pre-sale. Uh, or a physical item. So if you guys just use that code kangaroo, you can get 20% off any of Dorian's courses or anything else that you like. All right. And then I did drop the, a link in there to that image. It's a little imager link. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If 
For some people, this would be the finished piece right now. <laughs> Modern art. Yeah, it looks cool. I have to say, like, it doesn't look terrible. Yeah, no, this, this already feels like it's definitely <laughs> something with content. It's darker than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So but this is also interesting right now. Um, we kind of have something. It's pretty raw. It's pretty, uh, yeah, simple. Mm -hmm. And I want to stay present to what's happening and not just go mindlessly with my plan, which was to cover everything with this brown. Mm -hmm. So if I cover everything with the brown, we lose the cool thing that's happening now, which is a kind of dark shape contrasted with all the light shape around it mm -hmm. and it's like on my eyes and nose which is human uh, like people are really attracted to faces that's how we're wired for absolutely survival communi uh, communication so if you take that away in an image it's like very disconcerting uh, it also feels a little bit like a mask mm could be interesting. So now this is the creative process. Like I made a mess and I'm staying aware of what is happening um, and how I can use that mess for something else, for the next step. So here's a white Conte. Mm. I don't know where this is going, but <laughs> I feel called to make a mask kind of like a superhero. Yeah, a little stiletto mask. How does that go? Oh, I missed the nose. Okay, this looks like ski goggles. <laughs> uh, There's nothing saying mm. that the, the, the first line that you lay down for this is the only line. There can be multiple masks. That's pretty much what we do each day. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You change, you Different change hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I just had another idea. Um, I like kind of some of the blurriness here. And this writing at the moment is too strong, captures mm -hmm. too much attention. So I'm going to use a new brush with just turpentine. Or maybe okay. nothing. Let's see what that does. Okay, that blurs it a bit. It's like Photoshop uh, mixer brush or blur tool. Yeah, a little Gaussian blur on the text. <laughs> now, as someone was asking for a little bit more um, information on just what this medium is, um, you have oh. addressed it a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's everything now. Yeah. Uh, this is oil paint. Just Raw Umber by Winsor Newton, if you care to know. Mm -hmm. A pretty standard brand. And then it is Conte, Conte Chalk of different types. Actually, oh, it's New Pastel. This is also from <laughs> when I was a student, but at, at the art department studying entertainment design. We did, yeah, we used these. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Conte okay. and oil at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, and then just the good old fashioned turpentine. Yes. I do so like where that, that, yeah, like where you're going through and then kind of like pulling the that more like the peachish kind of color over the black areas. Um, I softened it here just to see, like, to keep this soft and then keep this sharp. Mm -hmm. I think one thing in painting in image making that's really uh, compelling is variety, like different things going on. So if I have, um, let's say here, it's one stroke with the Conte, that with the pastel, that's all the same type of texture now. Mm -hmm. 
mm. right? Mm. But if I go in here, I've created variety. I create textured, softened, textured. This is better than it was before, I think, because it's more varies, more interesting. Absolutely. OK, let's see what turpentine does up there. By the way, one thing I'm not looking forward to <laughs> is cleaning these brushes. Yeah, I can only imagine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also something that you can notice. Well, I can notice. Um, sometimes the painting needs something that I'm too lazy to do because I know I need to clean my brushes afterwards. Mm. That's the moment where it's good to take the effort um, word or, or like energy and give it, give the effort to the painting. Use mm. the other big brush, even though you have to clean it because the painting will be better for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it speaks to the actual, like the, the thing that goes into painting, knowing when you have to have to give it the most effort, the most energy, despite how you feel about something. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's much more durable than I thought. Yeah, it's really staying. Yeah. I think that, so, I don't know what, it, what it's like up close as much, um, but it from sure. the further back oh. angle of the camera, it does seem that the, the darker Conte crayon has more staying power. Definitely, yeah. Um... Did I have my phone? I can connect my phone here as well. Then I can give some really close up views, but I think I left it in the other room. Oh, it's okay. So yeah. I can do that. I do like <laughs> the, the multiple lines of the mask part. I think that's, it, it gives it a nice quality. Hmm. So what would you say um, the things that you've thought going into this that were kind of your like um, the blue sky phase of planning the painting? Uh, so you wanted to include these words um, and then do the wash. Well, that just came in the moment. Mm. Is there anything that you see being um, what you'll approach next in this? Let's do the eye. Okay. I just thought like the mask is a bit like, very empty. Mm. So... I'm gonna block in the eye. This, I'll be kind of drawing in the beginning. For drawing things, I like brushes that are a bit kind of flatter. Mm -hmm. So either of these is fine. I'm gonna go with this one. Okay. And then probably just undiluted raw umber. And by the way, just having one pigment, Romber, also keeps things simple. Um, which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> it's less risky because fewer colors in the image will mm -hmm. ensure that it looks harmonious. Like it's still, even though it's pretty wild, they're not, there's not much going on in terms of color. If I put, let's say, something like this in there, uh, that will be a very different color scheme. Absolutely. Holding it like that, it's actually interesting. Can you know those, like a uh, Robocop? <laughs> yeah, like the, the little, like a uh, little visor. Yeah, it's like <laughs> eye, like a visor. That could actually work, like color-wise. Yeah, I think it, it being green, like you expect to see greens and browns by each other, even though it's like this brilliant green. Yeah, so this is probably not gonna stay it doesn't work with my intention of drawing the eye but for the fun of it let's just do half of the eye green we can always paint it out later okay now there's a tangent there's kind of this dark shape ends here mm -hmm. and the green shape ends here too that's usually a bad thing because it tends to flatten things out. If I go across, 
the like dissolving the tangent by having an overlap instead. Now this green line is hovering in front of the dark shape. Mm. You can do that, either like create an overlap or bring the green line over. So just there's no tangent. It's a small like trick or technique or something to look out for. All right, the eye. So I pulled up the reference here. I can see very lightly my pupil over there. And I think this is the lower eyelid kind of this, which is not a shadow, that's a half tone. Um, so this is too dark, but it will help me orient myself. There are the glasses here. Who? yeah, really <laughs> hard to see now. This is the nose. So maybe the glasses were here. Yeah, it, it is an interesting thing to have to try to decode the thing that you had put down. Find it again. Yeah. 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 But that could I lead think, to interesting results. Yeah. And I much prefer going from something that is soft like this, like the eye is very atmospheric now, mm -hmm. to go from that and sharpen it up, add more information, <laughs> more detail. I much prefer that to having a drawing that is uh, has been killed by the mechanical precision, mm -hmm. especially if there's like white of the paper showing or the canvas showing through and shapes are coming together, but like almost you're trying to paint one thing next to another thing. I much prefer to paint the blend two things and then find the border again on top. It just tends to look much more cohesive. Okay, corner of the eye will be important. Um, be around here. And overall, the size of the eyes is also quite important. Yeah, I think there's so much, if, if an eye is larger or smaller than what it would be, um, it, it, in the way that cartoons work, it speaks to a certain kind of like emotion or energy immediately for it to be smaller or larger. And so to nail that means yeah. so much now. Do you find yourself having to work against um, what are kind of like the, like the iconic uh, representations of stuff now? So if you wanted to like push or pull something and play with proportions, there are certain suggestions within cartoons or other mediums that, that like that carries a meaning for those things or do you just play with it as is mm, not sure i know i understand what you mean like do mm, i stylize on purpose or yeah or do, do you stay away from something because of um the stylization of those meaning something in particular or do you try to ignore any any other any things like that and just make the art. I don't know. I okay. have to look at my work <laughs> to, <laughs> to answer that. I haven't thought about it. That's fair. I'm not sure. Um, so people did have a couple different questions. Uh, so there was one, a person had asked, uh, you had said that you studied a few different things. And they were asking, what kind of exam is given for the animation department in your country? Uh, I have no idea. I studied, I didn't study animation. Animation was a department at, sorry, it's going to be confusing. Uh, well, but that's the way to say it correctly. The school is, was called, it doesn't exist anymore, mm. was called the art department. Oh. And it had an animation department, illustration, entertainment design, and fine art. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know if they were bringing in... in I didn't know if they were bringing in some knowledge of your background that I didn't have. So I was just delivering that question as asked. Um, yeah, I uh -huh. guess we'll, we'll go for a couple different ones here. Um, a person was asking, like, how do you, how do you get very pale tones in graphite? They use mostly 10 H to H pencils for botanical work. Oh, wow. They struggle to get very light tones in flowers. Uh, if you're using 10 H, 
and you're getting you're struggling getting very light tones you're probably uh, pressing too dark too strongly firmly i yeah i'm shocked by that like 10h is so hard mm -hmm. um, i think you can do if you train let me go to this camera if you train your hand to control the pressure you can do everything you you can do with a 10h with a, I don't know, 3H, just by having less pressure. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing you could try is using a brush and graphite. Mm -hmm. So the, with, with charcoal or graphite, the shorter the brush, the darker the tone overall, roughly. So this brush, acts somewhat similarly to a stump, mm -hmm. bending stump, because the hair is so short. If the hair is longer, it lifts more of the, especially with charcoal, it lifts more of the charcoal off the page. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if I can show that somewhere. Jumping, jumping projects and media, <laughs> but that's fine. So this is a two H, and I like to hold it kind of towards the back if I make a light tone. And I can make a tone that's barely visible. Yeah. I don't know if. I could go lighter than this by just having less pressure. Yeah, I don't, I, it doesn't necessarily read fully uh, through the compression of the video. Uh -huh, but I see. Yeah, it it definitely, if, if you hold it, like the things that make you hold it on the back end of that is so that you're not getting to apply so much direct pressure to the tip, right? There we yes. go. Everything is there mirrored. We go. Help. <laughs> Almost. Oh, my face is in the frame. <laughs> yeah, cameras. They really want to show faces. Yes, um, like humans. <laughs> it, it. it was there. It definitely was there. Yes. I think they, they got you to see that one. Find the frame and pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it'll so, make a, a big difference to hold it farther back and to use that, that harder hardness. Yeah. I should also mention the sharp points that I use. I call this ninja pencils. <laughs> There's a couple advantages. It doesn't just look cool and dangerous. <laughs> um, sharpening this way, the point will last longer. So you have to resharpen less frequently. Mm -hmm. But also you can see your drawing much better around the point because the wood has been removed and the lead is, is thinner. Mm -hmm. So if you compare that to a thicker point like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you're trying to draw precisely with this point, all the wood is kind of in the way for you to see what's happening. Yeah. If you draw with this point, it's much more precise. You can see exactly where your point is. Mm -hmm. To get a smooth tone like this, I use a method called island hunting. You can find the blog post article about that on my website. Okay, let me see if I can bring that up here. How to create, create smooth tones, I think the page is called. Here we go. Drop that okay. in for everybody here. So with uh, now that you've got that, that green line in there, uh, <laughs> what what do you think would be the next bit to tackle? I want to put a highlight here? on the eye because it's fun <laughs> and to make this area more interesting and make the image more alive. Mm -hmm. And this is too harsh now. Like it's just straight white from the tube. Mm -hmm. 
but I can paint into it. Blending with the surrounding areas and then put, if I want it brighter, put more white on top. Reference. I do like it having that focus. Yeah, now I've, what I've done is create a focal point also. It's magnetic. Your eye will go well here because it's green, like what is, what's happening? But also here because we have high value contrast mm -hmm. with the light against the dark and sharp edge. And it's an eye, which in itself is attractive. That we are, we're immediately magnetic. pulled to. Yeah. Uh, this brush is probably too small. <laughs> I should be using a bigger brush, but I'm already there, so keep going for a moment. It also felt a little bit dry, so I mixed in some medium so that the paint slides around a bit better. Mm -hmm. Glancing over at my reference, and I see all the lower lid is catching light as well, the top plane of the lower lid. The lightest part in the eye is probably down here after the highlight. So this is pretty bright. And I'm also um, squinting, so closing my eyes to look at the reference image, which kind of blurs and simplifies everything. Which brings me to my favorite Photoshop filter. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's in the shading course knows already what that is. Uh, Posterize? What, what, what yeah. are you going to do here? What is this one? Filter. Ding, 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 ding. Wait, uh, can you share the screen real quick? Oh, wait. Yeah, I can. I thought you can see it over there. I can a little bit. Well, what, what's, uh, what's the text you got here? So we, we went to... Oh, uh, the top part of the menu. Filter, noise, Filter? median. Median. There we go. And what Drop the median filter guys. does is it helps you see like a painter. It simplifies the image <clears throat> while keeping some of the sharp edges. Um, <laughs> I have this camera in my face. So look there on the screen. Mm -hmm. If I increase the radius setting of the median filter, the image get, will get more and more simplified. At the start of laying in a painting, this is how you want to look at the image, whether you're painting from life or a photograph or whatever you're doing. This is the visual essence of the image. It's super important to train yourself to look like that, to perceive like that. We did a couple value studies um, in the shading course last week. This is a worksheet. And here the median filter is applied. You can see the images are kind of simplified. If you look at the bear, which maybe doesn't look like a bear. And then here was my value study. Mm. So we're taking the essence of this image translating it into three, four, or maximum five different value groups to train exactly that skill of seeing the visual essence of the subject. Absolutely. Yeah, it helps a lot. I think just to, like, like there are certain things that people do um, within digital tools that are kind of mimicking what you would do in real life, where you can flip something over yeah. to check proportions and overall reading of an image, uh, yes. squinting, going into this filter, very useful tool. Mm -hmm. Mirror. Oh, look! I can show you. Uh, that's Another me. Painting I'm working on. <laughs> like there. Yeah, <laughs> it, it makes the biggest difference to actually like just reframe things. We get so focused on just like dialing in this one little edge of something, but sometimes that little edge that you've been fiddling with for three hours, it wasn't good in the first place. <laughs> Or it's not important. Absolutely. Yet. 
So this eye stands out a bit too much now. It's too sharp, mm -hmm. too much contrast. So I want to unify that a bit. How are we doing on time? Uh, so right now we're at an hour 20. So okay. um, we have about 40 more minutes in what we initially blocked in. Uh, up to you if we fill that. Mm -hmm. How are there questions in the chat? We do have a couple questions. Yeah, so there's a person who was asking, um, and this question might not necessarily apply to this piece, but hmm. they were asking how long it would take to finish a painting of this size with a piece of <laughs> That depends entirely on what finished means. Mm -hmm. I have another piece that I started um, a long time ago. So the last 10, 15 years, most things that I've started are just eternally unfinished. At some point I get a surge of desperation or energy or motivation or something. And I start another one like, no, <laughs> this one. Um, but I don't finish a lot of things. Mm. And Patrick Devonas, my good friend, keeps telling me that this painting is done. But for me, it keeps missing things. Oh, I do like this. I, I would say this is plenty done. <laughs> I want it. It's, I think it's going to stay upside down. That's how I want it, I think. Mm. Um, I want to put something real, realistically painted, I think, around here. Okay. Like a three-dimensional object floating kind of in front of this picture plane. It's too flat mm. overall, I think is what bothers me. But this is another yeah. kind of multi-media mess. I do like the, the way that things are showing through it in the forehead area. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, it was all like what you see in the clothing or body-ish shape. Mm -hmm. Everything was like that. And then I painted over the background. You can still see it through. Mm -hmm. It's a transparent uh, glaze wash to separate the body from the background there. Yeah. And I painted part of the face also. So if I paint it like this, then it could be done faster than if I paint it like this. Yeah. Right. My this painting. Yeah. Certainly. How long it takes depends on what look you want, what level of finish. Yeah, absolutely. I think also if something is a little bit more interpretive, uh, it can either go really fast or be the longest piece you've ever worked on. How do you mean interpretive? Um, so if if it's something that just has like a meaning to you, it's not something that's there for just being a technically correct representation of the reference. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times those things end up being something that a person works on in that moment and it's expressive of how they felt in that moment, or it's something that is so nebulous that they end up working on it for a solid 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, people did Probably have a couple... overall a bigger painting will take a longer time. Yeah, certainly. And a small painting. Um, so people uh, did have a couple other questions. They were asking about some low-hanging fruit or a quick win exercises that you recommend for people on a budget with graphite. Huh. First, join the shading course. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, there's 25, something like that, um, low-hanging low fruit slash most effective uh, exercises I could find in there. Um, and I should also say you will never be able to acquire the shading course for a lower price than the next three days, I think. Yeah, been told been, yeah. next three days. It's severely underpriced. And I, <laughs> it's, I've, and this is my main project the last four years. And I keep adding content to it. Mm -hmm. And we have feedback, like every week we meet, there's the Discord server. Like usually these courses with feedback cost like $1,000 upwards. Yeah. And right now the shading course is 250 
So yeah, and it's like fifty dollars off even off. with that thing. Yes, and so the next three days there's the discount, twenty percent. So I think this is a historical moment for that reason too. <laughs> it will never be priced this low again, at least in this package. Yeah. Um, I did, and again, have, having that actual like structure that you provide for this makes a big difference with all those different yeah. projects. But maybe that was a bit of a sneaky way of answering. So no, no, no. This was a great one. Um, that's that's the best one you you have. Like, uh, you don't need to give an answer in this particular moment because you spent the last several years putting together all of those exercises. Yeah, but you can also see them. I think you can see the lesson plan mm -hmm. on Proco and on my website. Um. One really useful assignment is the value gradient and value scale. So you, the first one, just create a, a smooth gradation from white to black, as dark as you want to go with the medium you choose. And the other one, these are both the same, are scales. So you can do nine steps or five steps and make each step even like a musical scale and that looks, sounds very simple, but I believe it's, it's hard. Not. It's hard. Yes. Yeah, it's one of the first things you do in like uh, starting art school, they have you go through that so you have a good understanding of what it takes to make those uh, and how it feels to do that. And it's not easy. Yeah, and the purpose for doing that is to have control of your medium. Because like in this portrait, I need to be able to make the control my edge, softness or sharpness, to control the value, lightness or darkness, and to control proportions. Mm -hmm. For me, drawing are mainly those three things, shapes, values, edges. And the gradient and scale assignment train that specifically. Uh, looking in <laughs> back here, I want to show you this too. It's a very different way of making art than this one, for example, but it's using the same skill of, of technique, like a musician who's either singing or playing their instrument, they need to be able to control the note, the speed, the loudness, all of that to make their music. So for drawing, it's the same. And this is a drawing by Alan Williams that I traded for one of my drawings, which was an amazing moment. Mm. And look at that. This is very good. Like the, the of detail. This is pencil. The depth going from the like the horns in the front to the horns in the back. Yes, and remember I talked about variety mm -hmm. like with the softness and sharpness. So here we have just line, and then very refined, detailed rendering. That variety makes the drawing more interesting. If the horns were also fully rendered that image would be worse, I think. Absolutely, I agree. It's better now because of the variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it suggests so much. As, as things go back in space, they become less detailed and lighter. And so it, you feel that depth. Yes. Low hanging fruit, graphite, the egg also, draw an egg make it as realistic and subtle as you can. Mm -hmm. Great exercise. If you cannot make an egg like this, you will not be able, most likely, to draw a realistic portrait. Hmm. Well, that's, that's my thinking. I do agree. Okay. Um, any suggestions from the audience of what I should do next? Yeah, let's see. I don't know if you were open to that kind of thing right now. Yeah, if you guys yeah. have any particular ones, drop them here in the chat. Um, there was a question from earlier. A person was asking, uh, when rendering, are you thinking in 3D planes or 2D shapes of tones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both. No, it took me a second there. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's the Russian method for me, like in my brain, there's the Russian method of drawing, which comes to, from the Renaissance, which is very structural, understanding the three-dimensional form, drawing more like a sculptor, 
and there's the French method, which is more visual optical. <clears throat> mm. And this image, for example, was painted with not very much awareness of the three-dimensional structure. A little bit, but mostly it was just looking very, very precisely. <laughs> and if I look carefully enough and I have enough control with my medium that I can make soft edges soft, light and dark values the right value, and proportions in the right place, shapes, values, edges. Then if I spend long enough, and this one took two months maybe, of drawing every day for three days and a three hours mm -hmm. a day, um, you can make something that's very convincing without much understanding of three-dimensional structure. But if you do understand structure, that more Russian way of drawing, constructive way of drawing, it's an added benefit, I think. You can create an even stronger statement of form and create more presence in your work. Absolutely. Um, so one person was asking for the name of the artist of the piece that you had traded for again. Alan Williams. I there you go, guys. I think, yeah, Alan, I'm not sure of the spelling. He's worked in film and illustration. And he's a lovely person. Yeah, I think I think it's a um, an E Allen. A L L E N. Yeah, very possible. I think that's I dropped the website for that person here for those interested. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um so we have a couple different suggestions also. Um, Yay. One, per one person was just saying add color. Okay. <laughs> uh, and the person um, said, a scarf maybe, question mark. A scarf. I really dislike scarves. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should do it because of that. Like, don't take myself so seriously. But man, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I'm looking at it right now, I don't necessarily feel like a massive thing missing. Um, but looking at it, I don't know if, how do you feel about the white that is there on the outside of you versus the, the, the white of the neck? Like, do you, do you feel that there should be any separation between you and the background? Whether that's making the background have something more to it or having the white of you have something more to it? Yeah, it could be a good distinction. Um, right now, I do so, like how flat it is because of that with the white, but is there anything in there? Uh, how do you mean? Is there anything in there? Yeah, is, is there anything to the idea of having any sort of separation with you in the background, or do you like it as uh -huh. is, where you are yeah. unified with that background? No, I like the idea of creating more separation. Okay. And what I drawn to more is keeping the background white mm -hmm. and having the figure like the, the face become more of one shape unified shape so i've added quite diluted raw umber here and let's tone this down this probably already started setting up with like drying mm -hmm. I apologize if that is really annoying sound. Oh, no, no. It's far enough away that I think it's just kind of a little bit of soft ASMR in there. <laughs> now, how do you feel also, about the lightness of this versus what you ended up in the beginning? Yeah. It's a rag, which yeah. is super fun. You can use this for shading too, like wiping out, um, bringing back some of the light. Mm -hmm. Not if much will come off here anymore. Yeah, a little bit. You can oh, I like that. Bring the light of the nose out. Yeah. So now we are sculpting. We're shading. Yeah, I, I like when you're you're pulling things away to add a highlight. That was good. Yeah, it's really satisfying too. 
Now with that last part there, when you were getting under the eye, is that too oh. set for the, the turpentine to actually make a big difference or were you still able to pull some out of there? It's pretty set, but yeah, a little bit. I could probably dip this rag into this turpentine and then bring that in here and scrub. Nice, See? yeah. This is not so great. It's the bar in the back. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like the little added texture elements with how textural this piece <laughs> is. Just have to be careful. If it's there also, it will be, maybe become distracting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something bold. I don't like how strong that eye is coming out. Oh. Should I? I'm going to go over it. Should I do it with a rag? Or should I do it with a brush? Uh, here, I'm actually going to put a vote in here for people. <laughs> it's like a, a game show. <laughs> Let's rag see. Or brush. Yeah, rag. Brush. All right. So we'll leave that up for a moment. It'll take a second for the, some votes to, sure. to come in from that one. Yeah. But just that way, I don't have to try to like count yes uh, rags and brushes. Um, the brush will keep it, I have more control with the brush, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I can soften it a little bit. With the rag, it might take a lot away. Yeah, it'll be a pretty but drastic we'll one with the rag, I think. Okay, so I'm now about more to turpentine, it it's a lighter tone for the ear. But this is going to drip, which may or may not be good. I like the idea of the drip for this. I think that that would unify you with the background. Like it, it, it makes you separated from the background, but it makes it feel like there's a reason why there is that marriage of you and the background. Okay, so it looks like the winner was brush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the soundboard for it. <laughs> let's go so it's softening it and mm -hmm. integrating it back into the surrounding area we've lost this the dark splotch now so the whole composition has changed also by by darkening this mm -hmm. um, i think it's worse now as like as a composition now the mouth really stands out mm. so Let's darken here. I'm feeling my ego, like wanting to, at the end of this live stream, have something that looks good. And I'm dropping that desire right now. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to keep going with the flow and see what, what feels good. Yeah. More turpentine. I don't want this to be super dark. Just a little bit of tone. Uh, this is my jawline. By holding the brush like this, you can kind of draw also, mm -hmm. which is fun. Yeah, I'm glad that you chose to kind of hit the jaw there a little bit with that darker brush mark. Mm -hmm. I went outside a bit too far, I think, but let's see, maybe we can retire this rag and get a fresh new rag and erase back into it. Remember I said I, I reestablished the Carpe Diem? Oh, it doesn't show so much on the camera. Let's see if that works better. With a darker Conte. Mm -hmm. It's really a, a darker value now down here. Someone is asking, um, how can you avoid overblending and leave more brushwork marks? Staying aware of it. I mean, now I don't care so much about overblending. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going back and forth between unifying 
like blending together to unify and then pulling things out again. Mm. But yeah, now I think we're definitely on the too soft and blended side. So how to avoid overblending is just be aware of it, I guess, and and make adjustments as you go. I think this is the upper lip, which right now is it? No, wait, this is the upper that, lip. That that's the upper lip there. Yeah. Good. Oh, it really looks different on camera than here in front of me. Yeah, there's some some areas where I think you being there in person with it, it it seems it's made it harder to judge what is what. <laughs> there's a part earlier where you were saying that you had like lost the eye, but it was still pretty visible okay. to the webcam. Yeah. Now, when you were first studying, when you were working, um, I'm assuming with pencils and other media that aren't as expensive as this, um, do you think that you still think about those as as much while working with paint? Do you think yeah, I think skill builds like that um, make both directions also. Painting will teach you a lot about doing that simplification that the median filter creates. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing on the screen now. Um, that's like painting forces you to do that because you're working with a broad tool like mm -hmm. a brush. And having that experience that will really help your drawing with pencil or charcoal or anything. And charcoal is used as a kind of transition medium because it behaves more like painting. You're working more broadly than with pencil, pencil a sharp point. Mm -hmm. So having painted, my drawing gets better. And in most schools, I think you start with drawing and work your way towards painting mm -hmm. because painting is more complex. And painting contains drawing, whereas drawing doesn't contain painting. It's like That makes sense. No, absolutely. Yeah. The the one informs the other. And while while painting does inform drawing, I think uh, drawing is definitely one that you would do first. Yeah. But also go with what you enjoy. So now I'm drawing with paint. And I'm bringing back some sharpness. Yeah, of the glasses in there? Yeah, and... <laughs> so now looking at the picture and looking at this, I want to reestablish that body relationship of a light forehead and dark hair. Right now it's kind of opposite. It looks like I have dark brown skin, especially with the white background too. Um, so just a continuous process of reassessing. And I think I'm going to do what you suggested, Steve, Stephen, and that is darkening the background. Mm. Yeah, it, it might be necessitated by that, the large mass that is you being darker in the front there. Yeah. And we might lose some of the drawing. I'm also thinking of ending it here <laughs> because like, I think it's going to be at least 30 minutes before this looks good again, mm. or like makes sense again. I don't think it's the worst thing. Like you said, okay. it, it's something that is, <laughs> it's, it's a process. This one won't be necessarily done in one go and it won't necessarily even be done like this week, this month, you know? Yeah. So it's taking, for, like, what is what do you mean by it's not the worst thing? To for to, sure to show understand. to show a person the people who are watching this that it's uh, it's a process that builds. This was a transformative one where you went from think from having um, like your basic lay of proportions to then taking it from that to make it expressive to see it at this this particular stage 
and not have like some big resolution and takeaway right now just speaks to uh, the process. Yeah. So yes, coming to a close soon. Yeah, I'm okay with this. <laughs> I, I'm also I'm also here as long as you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. I guess well, would you is is there anything that you would want to try to address um with the painting right now? Um or do you do do you very much want to have this be the last thing that we'll show for right now? I don't have a strong opinion either way. <laughs> um, but I I am not happy with it <laughs> at the moment. Hmm. You look at it right now. I do I do like the the way that the the white that you put around for the glasses, it kind of feels like it's almost like the shine, the reflection on some frames that we don't see. Mm -hmm. Like I like that kind of look. It's it's an interesting one. Um, there was a question here from, uh, Ign um, I don't know if it's Ignacio or Ignacio, um, but uh, do you prefer working from light to dark, uh, from dark to light, or starting with the midtones? Uh, I think my favorite way is to start with a toned canvas, toned drawing. Um, kind of like this. Also, hard to see a little bit. Um, it was white paper that I mount, mounted on this wooden panel and then toned with a mixture of water and pigment. I think tempera, watercolor, and a drop of glue in the paint mixture, like water pigment mixture. And the glue makes it a bit easier to erase the lines. And this is now off white. If I hold up a white piece of paper next to it, you can see. Yeah, that makes a big difference. So we could go on top of this with a white chalk and pull out the highlights, which is much faster. And that's also why I wanted to get rid of the pure white on this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the first time anyone um, goes and starts on uh, starts a drawing on tone paper, they realize that how, how big of a difference that makes, and it's kind of like this little tiny little art cheat code. Yeah. Rather than having to just maintain the highlights with the white of the paper. Yeah, and you can buy. I mean, you will, most of you will know this. You can buy brown paper mm -hmm. or any kind of color but then toning your own paper can be quite fun because then there's also different textures yeah absolutely what was what was it that you used to tone that particular paper i have no idea <laughs> <That's> <laughs> probably also 10 years ago yeah, watercolor I, i'll say yeah well in the, the bottom left of it having that big different like that little blotchy bit on the bottom, that's good. I also have something very special here, which is this, what is which this? is paper. This paper you made. Uh, a friend made yeah. from recycled, recycled paper and cardboard. So I'm gonna nice. draw something on this one day, but it feels really precious, mm -hmm. which, made it so that I haven't used it in also, I don't know, five, six years. Mm -hmm. And if I die in two weeks, I will <laughs> regret not having done something with it. I understand so, this one. Same thing. Like, yeah, you got to choose what it, to but do. Also not for like, not too much. Mm -hmm. Man, I really, um, really don't like <laughs> how this looks now. <laughs> I don't know. It, to me, it, it looks like it looks like a cover of something. Like I can see this being the cover of a book, 
uh, an album, anything like that, like it already feels that way to me. But maybe it just speaks to the fact that you don't necessarily feel that it serves um, the your idea of what this piece is supposed to represent, you know? I don't have such a clear idea. Yeah. But... Which can sometimes See? make it harder. <laughs> yes. Kind of bring back light. Ooh, that's the Conte coming in. Mm-hmm. What's happening in the chat? Um, so the one person did ask, what kind of glue? Did you use uh, PVA? Uh, just wood glue, yeah. Okay. Like white glue. I think it's uh, fine. Wow, I'm surprised how how light this gets. Yeah, especially after it had, had so much time to set in that area still. Yeah, so adding turpentine really makes it come out again. Mm-hmm. Um, one person did ask, um, any, any tips on not letting the brush slip on oil paper as it becomes greasy? I'm not sure what they mean by letting the brush slip. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wasn't quite too sure on oil paper either. But yeah, if you want to expand on that a little bit in the chat there, please let us know what you mean. Um, By the way, like median filter, I am kind of median filtering in the image. <laughs> because of you brushing over it? Well, my tool, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty a rough tool. But also the stage I'm at, like I want to make big overall changes. And if I look mm -hmm. at the reference, actually, like there is no, like a very, very subtle distinction between the wing of the nose and the cheek. Mm -hmm. So I can just blend those together for now. Yeah, just lose that edge there. Yeah. Mm, I there's some I think there's something to this right now where the detail of the eye, this um the left eye for people looking at it from this side, uh the forehead is light. Um then the eye with the green mark in it is like less is less detail and then the cheek being so highlighted with the detailed eye right there. It feels intentional, despite knowing that it's not. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. I pulled um, some of those lights back out again. Uh, so they, they did come in with a little bit of a clarification. They said, oil paper is cheaper than canvas, so we use it in art school here. So uh -huh. it might be that while they're actually trying to make an image on it, they're not able to control um, their tool that's putting down the, those marks. Yeah, I don't have too much experience with oil paper. The slipperiness might just be a result of the medium mm -hmm. a limitation or, or a feature. Maybe you can use it to your advantage. Um, I wonder if adding a layer, let's say just white and raw umber. Raw umber is great because it dries really quickly. Mm -hmm. like coating the oil paper with raw umber and maybe white if you want, mm -hmm. letting that dry for two days, three days a week. Longer is better always with oil paint, letting it dry longer. Um, and then when you paint on top, your paint has something to grab onto. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not quite as slippery. Or you yeah. can use gesso too, like priming the oil paper. Yeah, just something to give it some tooth. Yes. Okay. How do you feel now that you've erased some of these areas, kind of lightened them up? Better, but it still looks <laughs> <laughs> pretty funky. <laughs> hmm. I do. I do like the the change of it. It it's done a lot. Uh, it was looking pretty sad, the facial expression, in mm. the beginning when I started. And then I lifted the corners of the mouth on purpose. 
and it was better. Now it's back to sad. Oh, because you lost some of the the corners there. I think so. I see the I see the corner of the mouth under the green line eye. But the yeah. other, the detailed eye, I don't necessarily see it so much here. I don't know what that's like in person for you. The detail of this eye? The, I can, uh, the corner of the mouth under that green line eye, I can see. But the one under uh -huh. the detailed eye? Oh, I see. I don't see much of the corner over there. Yeah, no, it's gotten quite blurry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's so much blur. It, yeah, from, from further back, it all kind of like blends together. This is very nice. Okay, so do you guys have any any um, in the chat? Do you guys have any other like things that you see now that it is closer? Because this makes a world of difference to it. Okay. Yeah, it's there's so many there's so many different like tiny like micro changes in that one like whiter wash that didn't really they, they didn't pop out from further away mm -hmm. the camera. and what, what's motivating you going through and adding the the harsher lines again the sharper lines uh i think it was too yeah getting too lost too blurry mm. and also now that the camera is closer i can see more of or like I want more detail in this area. Mm. Now to, to take this piece from where it is now to to work on it, to have it be something that you would want to share with the world in some context, <laughs> aside from a live stream of the entire process, yeah. um, what would you expect for yourself? Would this be um, like the other piece that you've worked on for a much longer time? Or do you feel that something interpretive like this would be a shorter amount of time? You mean like what, what style or level of finish? Yeah. Do, do you think that you need to take it to like a technical perfection? Or is this one something that can live in that unfinished space? <sighs> I think... I'm very uncomfortable with leaving things really unfinished mm. in a way where I don't like what I have there. Okay. So maybe that's something that I can explore. Like how unfinished can I make it while also making it something I like? Mm. At the moment, I quite like the brush or um, Comte marks in the hair on the upper left, which are out of frame at the moment. Mm, yeah. Up here. And this, if it arrives, I would be happy with leaving it like that, I think. But overall, it just being rough is one thing, but not looking good is another thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think right now it just doesn't work as a composition, as a painting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do. I, like, I know that you have this experience also, but as a person who did do a decent amount of uh, unsolicited murals in street art, um, <laughs> uh, this this does kind of have that kind of energy, something that you're just hitting the areas that are most important because you're limited by time and people mm -hmm. possibly come by. It feels good. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. I think... I'll go for just um, one last mention that though this is a, uh, something where we were showing painting, um, the main course that we that we wanted to try to suggest to people um, was your shading course, which I do think is a lot more approachable than painting. <laughs> find painting yeah, this was prohibitive. pretty much unrelated to the shading course. Yeah, it, this it's, today is is not a class. Like this is a jam session. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The course is like the polar opposite of this. Yeah, it's a it's very refined, very structured. structured. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just want to suggest to people again, 
that that course is there. It's fantastic. Um, it's one that you can learn something from and get to a point where you can do something like this. Uh, and well, hopefully, <laughs> I don't know if you want to do something like this to, to, to be able to learn how to to create something with those technical uh, rules so that you can then break them. Yeah. yeah. Is is there any like kind of like last thoughts that you want to give to people about? I don't know. I guess maybe what art can be for a person before we sign off. Hmm. What art can be? I think for me, because for a person, like, I don't know, can be whatever you want it to be. Um, but for me, I'm finding my way back to art being something I enjoy mm -hmm. and just doing it for, for the enjoyment of it. I got so serious about it that I think I quenched my enjoyment of it. Mm. And maybe back to realizing that I don't have to do everything by myself. Also, art can be something to do with other people. And on the canvas, like, I would love to bring a few people over now and <laughs> work on this mess that I made. Mm. They might have ideas, add things that work much better than what I have at the moment. Okay. Yeah, if you do end up having other people work on it or you find that even just you work on it to a place where you want to share it, uh, send it over our way. I'd love to get to post it as a follow up in the description, like the the description of this video, or even just on YouTube in general. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm curious what it's going to turn into. Yeah, I still, I guess the overall mission of it is to paint an image of my strength, mm -hmm. and I think that will include other people also. Like that's also a shift that I'm making. My strength is not just within me. It's also the friendships, connections I have with other people. Yeah, agreed. Um, so thank you for letting us be a part of this process. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining. And thank yeah. everyone for your input and questions. Yeah, you guys are, everyone who gave a word for this, you guys are in that painting right now. That's a cool True. experience. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and throw back to you of the past to talk about what that course is that we were talking about, uh, and then Sounds wish good. you guys all the best the best of days today. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Hi there, my name is Dorian, and this is the Shading Course. Let's begin with a question for you: Who are your favorite artists? Whose work touches something in your soul and inspires you? There are many amazing artists, and I noticed that my favorites have one thing in common. They understand light. In the year 2005, I found this image online, and it changed my life. I've now been on a 15-year journey of studying, drawing, and painting, with a focus on light and realism. I've learned a lot, and while I love making art, what I enjoy at least as much is pulling all this information together into a crystal clear format. That's what the shading course is. This course is going to change the way you draw. That's my promise to you. That's been my experience teaching over the last 10 years. But not only is the course going to change the way you draw, it's going to change the way you see the world around you. I think the more you are able to perceive, the easier it is to bring your artwork alive. There are over 25 assignments in the course. If you can control a pencil well enough to write, you will be able to complete the assignments. If you're a professional artist or a teacher, you will deepen your understanding of light and shadow and realism. By the way, here are some of my early drawings. Developing my skill took effort and time, and I know that with practice, you can develop yours. Now, in this course, we're going to work with understanding, and we're also going to work with care and with precision to make artwork that you're proud of. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be fun, and it's going to be worth it. So let's begin.